Welcome to the Business Spotlight. I'm Brenda Hector and with me today I've got Keith Harvey of UGP Global Energy, um, a new uh, startup business in the global energy industry. So welcome uh, Keith. Um, thanks for being with us today. Morning Brenda and thanks very much for the invite. So tell us, tell us a bit about UGP Global Energy then. What is it that you do? Well it's, uh, I'll be very brief because once I start talking about it, I could be here forever. Uh, it's quite complex, but the it was set up to help decarbonize the the energy sector along with a whole host of other things. So UGP Energy was built around a, a biomass pellet from a sustainable feedstock. Uh, uh, comprises of three main components. That is an agricultural grow of industrial hemp, a processing facility for industrial hemp, and a power plant which produces clean green renewable electricity, biochar, which is black gold, which if you don't know about biochar, you'll know soon because it's been seen as the saviour of the planet. And from that, green hydrogen. Okay. Okay, so you've got you've got a, a plant somewhere you mentioned to me before nope. we came. No, okay. No, we are we've we've got two businesses set up. We're working with Scottish Enterprise, a Dumfries and Gallery Council, South of Scotland Enterprise, uh, and various others in Scotland. Yeah, but we've also spent quite a lot of time last year out in Pennsylvania in the USA. I went out in May with Alan Hogarth and the Scottish North American Business Council on a trade mission. And I've been back out twice since, uh, and I have weekly calls with various uh, people within the, the Pennsylvania state governing it, uh, and it's coming along nicely. But we're at the fundraising stage, so that's the, the that's a good bit. So where did where did you do you come to this? And uh, have you been working with this technology and then spun out and created the the business, or what inspired you to to start the business? So. Uh, we lost a couple of environmentally friendly businesses during COVID because if it wasn't a thousand parts per million chlorine, so basically bleach, no one was interested. Uh, and environmental and carbon footprint reduction is one of our drivers. That's the, the main thing we're about. And with all the bad press for all the energy companies, uh, ripping down virgin forests, etc. A couple of years ago, we set about creating a... a energy producing biomass pellet, which we did and we've got here, fully tested. Uh, we've just got back from the IPO, uh, our trademark for our hemp pellet it was a bit, a bit of a Scott story. So it's it was uh, made in Kansas, believe it or not, uh, tested in Oklahoma, or created in Oklahoma. It was grown in Kansas, tested and created in Oklahoma. And then uh, a good guy, John McIndoe from a good... Scots-based company, Alfred H. Knight, they're the world-renowned biomass pellet testers. Uh, he's tested it for us. And after a couple of attempts, we have got something that is comparable with timber, but it's from industrial hemp. So industrial hemp grows in three months. Timber takes 30 years. Industrial hemp's high carbon sequestration. So we're quite excited about it. But over and above that, I briefly mentioned a biochar earlier with the help of Christian Wurzer, at the Biochar Research Centre in Edinburgh, we have created our biochar as well. And we've also got the certificate of analysis for the pellet and the biochar phenomenal. And from that, we've built out, which is a bit of a behemoth of a, a business model, along with a couple of ex-oil and gas experts, a, the, help, the assistance of various a, universities and specialists, both in the UK, and in, in Pennsylvania, uh, and we've got this business model now that, that can help decarbonize construction, manufacturing, apparel, and energy, of course. So we're ticking, in the words of the, the investment bank we're working with, we tick every single box of every desirable uh, investment opportunity, but because of the BMOS size of it, it's a sizable investment, and it's taken a little longer than we would like. But... Every day is a school day. Every day is interesting. Uh, and as we're trying to raise funds and bring other people on board, I'm sure you can imagine, I'm the chief dishwasher. Uh, everything from, from A to Z, 
get a, a, an eventful day every week. So that was my, my next question was, who's we? So you're saying this is what we're doing. Um, yeah, who's who's on board with you? Hey, so I've got myself. I, we've got a uh, chief financial officer on board who comes from a, a, a high-end background. Uh, Craig comes from oil and gas. Uh, th there's not an awful lot of direct employees at the moment because of, of the fundraising stage. But we have consultants, uh, the Dean of Thomas Jefferson University, uh, the... We've been working and doing some R&D work with Manchester University's Spin Out the Geek that they created graphene. So we're working with them, Queen's University Belfast, uh, and through Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania State University. We've got countless uh, consultants. Uh, one of the one of our consultants is very high up in in uh, environmental social governance, uh, equality, etc. So. Some of them I don't want to name at the moment because I'm, I, we're, we're not paying them as of yet, but they're, they've agreed that they will come on board with us and they're assisting them in the background. No, that's great. Great. Um, so had, have you always wanted to be a business owner? Hey, I'm 30 years as an entrepreneurial business owner from doing everything from I had a landscape business for 29 years that we grew from a single person employee, namely myself, right up to with 35 employees and contracts all over the country. I have imported environmentally friendly greenhouses, uh, owned a garden centre, owned a fruit and veg shop. I latterly in the last eight years were involved in bioscience technology, working through, based around our desire for helping to save the planet. Uh, and environmental and carbon footprint reduction. We were working with a probiotic cleaning product. And then at the start of COVID, myself and, and, and two other uh, businessmen were working on a, a Legionella control for closed water systems and ended up creating a hand and surface sanitizer from Hypochlorus that was non-hazardous. It uh, was used in World War II as an antiseptic in World War One as well, sorry, uh, and brought it to market in record quick time, which was great fun, uh, developing the, the, the brand and getting everything in place. But we brought it to market in record quick time, fully tested through the scientists at the, the research centre in Glasgow, had its, all its certification for cleaning, sanitising, and then a government directive uh, closed it as quick as we, we brought it to market because they, they made it because it wasn't a thousand parts per million chlorine. So those two businesses they disappeared thanks to COVID and the government directives, which is a shame. And now they, everyone's back on the on the Save the Planet, mm -hmm. the plastic reduction and, and trying to use, uh, use nature to, to assist in the, the, the drive to help save the planet. So as has been the case with me in several businesses in the past, ahead of the curve, but too too far ahead of it. Uh, and if staying power is great, but when a pandemic comes along and it knocks everything out, it's not yeah. absolutely ideal. So what, yeah, over your the, um, decades of experience then as an entrepreneur, what, what have been the biggest challenges that you've faced and how have you overcome them? Yeah. That's a good question because as an entrepreneur, everyone will agree that there are challenges every day and mm -hmm. whether that be a, a small challenge or a large challenge. But the one thing I would say is perseverance. You've got to, you've, you've got to believe in what you're doing. Uh, and one of my favourite sayings is hey, say what you do, but do what you say. Too many people go out there and, and actually they, they, they set up with a, a great ideal of what they want to achieve, but they're prepared to cut corners and and, and not not follow through exactly on their on their own why, and that that is a bit of a bugbear to me. But also, it's one of the things, and I don't know whether it's perseverance and belief in a project or whether it's just being a stubborn Scot. But yeah, I like I, I like to stick with something beyond that comes an expiry date of everything if it's not working out. But at the same time. Don't give up too early. 
Yeah, no, I like that. I've written that down. Say what you do, do what you say. Yeah. So is that is that your is that your ultimate piece of advice for someone that's thinking of starting a business or is there some uh, some other advice that you would give them do your research you've got to research and understand know know what it is that you want to do yeah and, and understand the steps to it one of the things i've had countless businesses over the over the years started off young think you're smarter than you actually are a but one of the, the biggest pieces of advice I would I would give anyone starting out is don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, don't be afraid to ask for support. There are people out there who have been and done it and there's no point in reinventing the wheel. So if you can get advice from a, maybe a, someone who's retired from high up in a in a public company or or you maybe just have a friend that's that's been in business, don't be afraid to ask plenty of questions and, and take that advice on board. Don't be too, don't be too stubborn and pig-headed to think that you know it all because you don't. Yeah. So who's been your biggest support over the years then? Well, I've had various, a uh, various people that that are in businesses that that have helped me get to where where I wanted to be. I uh, advised, assisted, and and are still doing so. There's people now. The uh, Stephen is a a great source of inspiration. And actually, I joined the the World Sustainability Collective as one of the as one of the founder members of it a couple of years ago. And Bill Cahoon is still a Bill runs the World Sustainability Collective. He's been in many posts throughout his career. Great guy for advice. Doesn't judge. He doesn't demand that you do things, but suggests and makes recommendations. And when he does, that's one thing. And I was lucky enough as I was. Growing up at school, a uh, two people that I, I grew well, two two people that I grew up with are uh, highly successful. Uh, my dad worked for Robert Graham at Graham's Dairies as a pedigree stockman, yeah. so I've I've asked young Robert Graham Junior on a few occasions for bits of advice, and he's been very helpful. And a friend from school, uh, John Scott from the Scott Group. John's one of the most successful uh, people in Scotland. Uh, self-made him and his brother Norman did a great job so the, the two of them have also given advice when required so as I said don't be afraid to ask hey, when you see someone who's been successful you may think that they're that they're unapproachable but they'll tend to be happy to give advice hey, and steer you in the right direction that's great so no one's unapproachable oh there may be some but they, <laughs> but there's there's certainly of the of the people that I've approached and and been mentored by and I think they've all been very helpful. Still, because I'm in Stirlingshire, still an enterprise. I've used them on countless occasions for my business, whether that be from helping you to learn the initial. It's still, my pet hate. I still hate the the finance side of it. Need to have a broad understanding, a and, and understand. The, the profit and loss, but all the other stuff that goes with that, doing doing the doing the monthly books and things doesn't interest me. I'm a I'm a people person. I like to go out there and business develop, and that's that's my forte. So, yeah, there's always people who are, and I think it was uh, Stephen Bartlett that uh, watched one of his interviews recently. And that's another source. Some of these podcasts with these experts that are that are out there, and and he said that he's good. I think he's got about 40 businesses that he's invested in. And he said that it's always a case when you walk into a room, although he's the CEO, if he's the smartest person in the room, he's built the wrong team. Which I think, again, really good advice, not something to take on board. Get get the people who know what they're doing and the avenues of your business that you require uh, and understanding that you can't do it all and you need advice is probably the biggest bit of advice I would give yeah I love that actually you know you said you don't like the financial stuff you don't like the numbers um and you love the people side and there are there'll be other people watching or listening to this going oh my goodness I hate I hate going out and meeting people and you know they'd be much happier doing the doing the numbers on you know doing the spreadsheet stuff yeah. so everyone has their own strengths so when you bring a team together these strengths make the whole business yeah. much stronger yeah some of the parts make the whole. Yeah, yeah. 
So what what does the future look like then? I mean, I, I appreciate it. it's early days. It's all about the future for um, for your business. What? Hey, well, this year we've we've got several meetings tied up this month with investors. A, we're working with an investment bank in in the USA. A, we're working with the state ag departments, energy departments, a, a, the Department for Community and Economic Development, a, one of the, the county economic development, business development teams. So this year's, there's a lot going on. A, every day is exciting. It's, and now that we've got our pellet and our biochar, we just need to secure the fine secure the, the smaller level finance to get to the bigger stuff. We've got it identified. We understand people who, from the investment bank, there's people there that, that want to invest. So it's completing the foundation. We've got, we've started working on some uh, letters of intent from, from end users, which will assist. Uh, uh, and it's, yeah, there's, there's a lot going on at the minute. Good, good, exciting times, exciting times. Um, and is this is this a growth time then in in what you're doing? I, I think it is, isn't it? And the I mean, I'm I'm based in Aberdeen, so we're we're all talking about the energy transition. Um, you know, going from from fossil fuels to to renewable. Um, it must must be an exciting time to be developing a new product in that market. Yeah, it is, but there's there's also it's exciting uh, and and it's desirable from from governments and and from states and from individuals but there is still an incumbent a uh, organizations there so you've got your oil and gas companies who if I was earning billions of billions of pounds of profit a year I wouldn't be too keen on and they uh, assist anyone else but they seem to be turning and they appreciate that that there are nature-based a uh, carbon negative solutions out there and we're going to have to going to have to embrace them and move forward they'll do their thing while still we can't you, you're not going to turn the fossil fuel tap off today and turn on the renewables tomorrow and that one the one thing that about our business model is it's 24 7 we can produce electricity 24 7 we can produce hydrogen uh, and one of the byproducts from that is our biochar. So the but it's it's not around one single item. It's there's multiple potential output products, uh, and a bit like a bit like you can grow corn and you can turn that into bread, or you can turn it into whiskey, or or various other aspects. The biochar is the same. So the uh, we're about to embark on another research and development. The uh, round with a with a geek. Because we've got a biochar, but we need to understand different temperatures of burning and different outputs and different different management processes. Because what works for a car tire isn't what would work for a, a graphene alternative for batteries. So there's yeah, exciting times. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just thinking if anybody's any of the audience is thinking, I've got something that I think would work. But they don't know how to test it or how to how to bring it to market. What what's your advice? Because you know you're you're a bit further down there. You've got you've developed a product, and how how do you find the partners to help you with that? Hey, aim as high as you can. We bit bit of a funny story. Our first pellet was created in a a farm cattle feed mill because because we didn't have any, the funds or or the awareness, and it caused a contamination. So I went to the biggest manufacturer of, of a pelletizing equipment in the US, gave my story, and when the, the CEO picked himself up off the floor from having laughed at the ingenuity of how we went about it, they actually, they actually offered to do the, the work for us at their Oklahoma laboratory. And the three top execs from the company flew in to make sure that it was correct. And we didn't pay for that. So sometimes if you've got something and you're honest, aim for the highest level of what you what you can. And you may just be surprised at how how forthright they are and want to assist you to get to where you need to be. I love that. 
That's brilliant. Yeah. Because a lot of people have a bit of a bit of imposter syndrome going there yeah. going on. Well, they won't listen to us. We're just this we we start up from wherever, you know. Yep. But actually if when the when the technology's right and you know, like you're saying, it ticks all the boxes, why wouldn't they help you? A big organization like that. And they can afford to help you. Yeah. So yeah. No, they were phenomenal. They the yeah, I, I have no knowledge of making pellets. These guys are the experts uh, and they're one of the world's leaders. So I, I was a bit taken aback with the offer that they put out there. And they, as I say, three of the execs flew in for three days to make sure our pellet was correct, the top execs. Uh, and they didn't charge me for that. So because had... if it works, if this works, then you, yeah. there's, 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 there's a new market for them. Of course they're going to, yeah. Yeah, well, there, there, there is a possibility for every project of them getting a sizable order for pelletizing equipment. But not everyone would think that these companies would be as amenable to to helping you, and and certainly helping us free of charge. So it was yeah, yeah that was that was an eye opener. I, I would never have done that thirty years ago. The, as you said, imposters. I'm not going to speak to a wee company like us, but yeah, you'd be surprised. You know, as my mother in law says when she's telling me about asking for a discount, if you didn't ask, you wouldn't get. So well, that, that, it's a. Uh, the, the, it's the old adage of if you don't ask the question they always know the answer's always no so yeah, yeah don't be afraid to ask oh that's a, that's a brilliant um a, a brilliant tip for any, any of the, the the audience today so um it's early days but if you started your, your business again would you do anything differently no uh, we're, we're hoping to replicate it so we'll just do exactly the same a uh, hard work honesty get to do don't deviate from from what your why is and, yeah. and it's quite simple for us it's environmental carbon footprint reduction a and doing things differently from what's been done before the the, the old adage of you if you do do what you've always did you'll get what you always got yeah so you want to be slightly slightly different a, uh, and achieve different things and hopefully we've set the foundation in place We've got a lot of people supporting us from very high level uh, in terms of advice and and giving their time for free at the moment to get us to where we need to be. Or us, it's uh, me basically, but yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, no, um, Keith, that's been brilliant. I mean, I've loved that you you've got your why, which is obviously what you've told me about the other businesses that you've um you've had. It seems to be there's a common thread going through there. Um, you've uh, you've got something that's going to make a difference and you're doing what you say you're going to do and um, some, some brilliant tips for, uh, for others that are thinking of, uh, thinking of, of a similar journey to the one that you're, that you're on. So um, thank you very much for, uh, for taking part. I really appreciate your time today. Thanks very much for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. Most enjoyable.